How I Got Revenge on My Cheating Ex This story takes place almost 12 years ago so I'll do my best with the dialogue and details but admittedly some things are a little fuzzy. Most of my life I've had a problem with picking men that were not good for me, so much so that I even had a phrase for it saving the world, one more on at a time. One of my more spectacularly bad choices was a guy by the name of Bob, obviously not his real name. I met Bob when I was working one of my two jobs at the local mall, he worked somewhere else in the mall so we hit it off and soon enough we were in a relationship. Within a few months my lease was up and we ended up moving in together which obviously in hindsight was a huge mistake but I was dumb and lonely. Soon enough red flags began to fly, he would say things in common conversation that were simply incorrect, like there's only four continents and the rest are actually owned by the Martian government and thus don't count etc and when challenged would circular talk until you either agreed with him or dropped the subject. He would also make claims that seemed entirely unbelievable such as when I asked where he had been staying prior to his mom's house he said he camped in the woods when I asked how he did that for months on end and without any gear he simply gestured to himself and said this is all the gear I need. The worst trait though by far was his epic laziness. I have never witnessed someone so lazy in my life. Bob was unemployed for over a third of our relationship and would simply sit in the apartment watching Netflix or playing some war game on his computer aka my spare computer typing away in the group chat. He would never clean up after himself leaving dirty dishes in the sink and filth on every surface while only taking a shower maybe once a week. The smell that permeated my apartment could only be described as revolting and could easily gag a maggot. I would inquire a few times a week on his job hunt only to be dismissed or given a growing amount of excuses such as but I don't have a car, how would I get there, the bus doesn't run in that area, the internet went down so I couldn't apply, etc etc meanwhile I am working double and triple shifts at my job to try to make up the lost income and running him all over town in my off time getting applications and helping him fill them out and turn them in. Keep in mind he doesn't have a cell phone so all of these apps have my contact info on them. Thus begins the era of him holding my phone while I'm at work so he can make calls or schedule interviews as well as I can get a hold of him from my store phone if I needed to. Things began getting weird, he began staying up later and later on this group chat, sometimes till almost dawn. Sometimes we would hang out all evening until it was time for bed. Then he would always make some excuse on why he needed to check the game before bed and he'd be right there. Hours would pass. No Bob. I began to get suspicious but nothing incriminating seemed to be taking place so I just shrugged it off as me being insecure. Then he started asking to use my car to go see his best friend Ben, now I wasn't super comfortable with this but I did know Ben pretty well and we got along almost better than Bob and I did so I guess to a degree I trusted Ben more than Bob and agreed to it. This happened a few times while I was working the evening shift and he was always back at the allotted time with my car and my phone and relatively grateful for the opportunity to hang with his buds. Suspicious. Um yes, but I'm the kind of person that is loyal and trusting to a fault and don't assume anything without proof and from every angle I'll seem to be on the up and you so I took it at face value. So one day he asks to borrow my car and go with his friends to a card gaming tournament, he put on a great show telling me how the prize money would help us out and with the decade there was no way he could lose. I just had to let him use my car and phone this one last time and he would be able to buy himself a phone with the prize money. I wasn't a huge fan of the idea but nothing untoward had occurred in the previous instances and I didn't feel like spending my only day off at a card game convention that I literally couldn't care less about so I acquiesced. I bought myself a couple green monsters and some vodka and had my own little personal silly party. Hours dick by and no bob, eventually I pass out only to wake up at the crack of dawn violently sick, this went way beyond a hangover. I start retching in the bathroom until there was nothing left but bile but the retching wouldn't stop. Hours ticked by and I lay in my bathroom floor sweating and convulsing with no phone, no car and no bob. I eventually was able to crawl to my room and wrap myself in a bathrobe before crawling down my apartment building stairs and began knocking on the closest doors. It took three apartments before someone opened the door and allowed me to use their phone to call my mom. My mother was at my apt in six minutes flat and rushed me to the ER where I was diagnosed with an aggressive and antibiotic resistant strain of C. diff. Bob finally showed up later that afternoon phone and car keys in hand looking very concerned and claiming to be deeply apologetic but my mom hated him from that point on. I was out of the hospital and back to work within a few days but it was the beginning of the end. During these last months we were constantly scraping by due to his lack of consistent income and poor spending habits. There were jobs gotten and there were jobs lost for various reasons throughout our relationship but the final job was one I helped him get literally three buildings down from my own workplace. This company rents furniture and electronics on a weekly slash monthly basis and I happen to know most of the employees and the hiring manager as they are regular customers at my coffee establishment. 
I was able to use what little sway I had to get him on there and he accepted a job as a delivery man. Within a few weeks I come home from work to find a brand new TV and entertainment system and him grinning like an idiot. I tell him we can't afford this, we can barely afford to eat and are surviving off scraps I bring home from work. He talks about his amazing employee discount and assures me it's no big deal that the rental fee will just come out of his check etc I was pissed. Not only had he not consulted me, he also had me on the account as well, my info had been taken from the credit app I filled out as a favor to help their numbers, so if he flaked I was liable. Fast forward another few weeks the rent is late and we are receiving eviction notices on our door, I come home from work and the TV is mysteriously gone. Thank goodness I think, he finally realized we can't afford it and took it back, he gets paid, rent gets paid and all is as good as it can be. Until I found a pawn slip for the TV in his pocket as I was doing laundry and went ballistic. He assured me he had plans to get it back in the works and to not worry about it, it will be taken care of soon and no one will be the wiser. I was too pissed to catch on to the secrecy aspect of the situation. A few more tense weeks go by with him working mornings and myself working evenings while we shared one phone and car. Until that fateful day arrived. I woke up that morning with a migraine headache and opted to let Bob take the car but leave me the phone so I can call someone later on for a ride to work. A few hours of uncomfortable sleep go by before I am awoke and by my phone. I answer the phone still groggy hello? There is a long pause on the other end of the line until a female voice asks some is Bob there? I felt a sickening feeling in my gut and began to shag. Is this real? Am I dreaming? No, he's at work right now this is his wife, total lie but hey, is there something I can help you with? I wasn't rude, I phrased it as a genuine question rather than an accusation. Another long pause before she began to stammer about maybe she had the wrong number but it was obvious she just wanted to get off the phone with me as quickly as possible and I realized in that moment that I desperately needed her. Please I said with an edge of desperation in my voice. I don't know what's going on but I just really need somebody to tell me the truth the last word came out in a sob and I sat there for a moment in silence trying to quell the urge to just cry uncontrollably. Listen the voice on the other end was almost gentle I need to make a few phone calls but I promise you I will call you back. She said it calmly and with so much conviction that I really wanted to believe her. Please, you promise? I almost begged. I promise she replied okay I took a deep breath and released it, I'll talk to you soon and hung up. I then proceeded to aggressively pace my living room floor staring at my phone while chain smoking and muttering to myself like a crazy person. I knew who she was calling. I was replaying all those little red flag moments in my head from the last few months, pinning down dates or behavior I'd found suspect when the phone rings again. It's her. I froze for a moment. Shocked she followed through and called me back, terrified of what this meant. I answered the phone and what followed was about the most soul-crushing 45 minutes of my life. After initial introductions June, again not the real name, and I began comparing stories and it became glaringly obvious what was happening. They had actually been in a relationship several years prior and had run back into each other on the aforementioned war game where they began to flirt on group chat. All those nights he'd been on the computer he'd been chatting with her. All those times he'd go hang out with his friends he'd been using my car to take her out and my phone to communicate with her. The time I was sick and alone with no resources. You guessed it. He was with her. Ah oh, but it gets better. Do you have a little silver hummingbird necklace? She inquired. Yes, my mother gave it to me for my 27th birthday actually I love it really? She said cause he gave me one for Mother's Day omg I almost yelled into the phone as I ran to my room and tore through my jewelry box. It wasn't in there. It was around her neck. From there we discovered not only had he been giving her my property as gifts but he had her over to our apartment passing it off as his own. I didn't want to believe him capable of doing something so cruel and disrespectful when I have allowed him to sponge off me for the better part of three years. Unfortunately as in confirmation she began describing my apartment to a T, all the way down to my bed sheets. June said he even pulled my secret box from beneath my bed and offered to use my adult items on her. She said she found it weird and didn't partake but I threw them away due to the sheer ick factor. Finally she uttered the words I didn't know I wanted to hear, you know what we should do? We should bust him together. My mind immediately started racing, indeed we should. I was a mix of fury, adrenaline and despair so my thinking wasn't exactly straight and details begin to get hazy here. We arranged to meet up at my work and find a way to lure Bob over there but unfortunately she lived about 40 minutes away whereas I only live about 6 miles from our destination so if I got there first I'd need to stall him, assuming he wasn't out on a delivery. I called a trusted co-worker of mine at work sobbing and begging for a ride. To his everlasting credit he got somebody to cover and left work to come get me and bring me to my car. 
When I got to Bob's workplace I went inside to retrieve my keys, this isn't uncommon as they know the car is mine, and was stopped halfway through store by Bob's manager wanting to talk about the payment due on our account. I don't remember the exact dialogue but I said something along the lines of look, I don't know when you are going to get your payment. I looked utterly defeated and told him we could never afford the TV in the first place and how I had begged Bob to take it back and now we don't have it anymore as Bob has pawned it and I don't have the money to get it out let alone pay him. I was full on blubbering at this point when he stopped me to clarify that his employee pawned a rental TV under contract. I confirmed that this was indeed true and presented him with a pawn ticket. He was mad. Apparently such an act is illegal and is terms for immediate termination but he assured me that if I could get the TV back to him there would be no harm no foul and he would terminate my contract without any penalties. I thanked him for his understanding and told him to let Bob know I would be over at my workplace. My heart is pounding in my chest and blood is roaring in my ears. What was I going to say? What was he going to say? Would June make it here before he did? My heart sinks when I see Bob's hulking form making its way in my direction. I frantically scan the parking lot for June's car. She's not here yet and I'm out of time. He hits the door looking out of breath and guilty as hell and I just stare at him stone faced. I walk outside silently to light a cigarette unsure of exactly what to say and he follows me wordlessly outside. He starts in with the it's not what it seems and it's all just a terrible misunderstanding and I just let him dig himself deeper into his hole of lies. I listen, I nod, I pretend to understand until a particular car pulls into view. June parks in the space directly next to where we were standing and gets out of the car. Hey Bob, how you doing? Bob has gone visibly pale, he hangs his head and sits down on the curb saying nothing to either of us. June and I greet each other and awkwardly shake hands before again returning our attention to Bob. June begins berating him on his lies and deceit, unveiling all of our mutual info and subsequent conclusions while I stood mostly in silence agreeing at the appropriate times but mostly still in shock. After 20 minutes of this I finally mustered up the courage to take my stand. We are done, I don't want to see you ever again. I'll pack up your things, only two boxes worth, and your sister can contact me in a few days to pick them up. Now I want your key. I held out my hand and looked at him. Not until I get my stuff out, then you get your key he replied. I tried to argue but he continued to refuse and used his large stature to his advantage knowing I'd have no chance in a physical altercation. He turned and walked away heading back toward his workplace, June and I talked a little more before she handed me my hummingbird necklace and left. I stood there alone staring at nothing trying to wrap my head around what had just transpired and then I cried. Oh how I cried. With nowhere else to turn I had only one call to make. To my mom. The moment she answered I unleashed this deluge of words at her that were half sobs and half rant. Stay right there, I'm coming she said. God bless my mother. Soon enough both of my parents pull up in my dad's truck and my mom gets out to comfort me and give me hugs. I look at the driver's seat and see my father with his jaws clenched and a peaceful deletion grip on the steering wheel while staring straight ahead. Oh crap. They take me to the pawn shop and my parents write a check for more than $500 to get the TV out, we then drive straight over to Bob's workplace and return the TV to the manager. As the manager finishes up the cancellation paperwork my dad spots Bob pacing around the back of the parking lot talking frantically on the phone. Unfortunately I didn't get to hear the ensuing conversation but my dad returns within a few minutes holding my house key and looking victorious. I believe this is yours he says as he hands me the key and then pulls me into a hug and I cried a little into his shoulder. My dad gave me a squeeze, kissed my temple and whispered into my ear they're firing him. I leaned back to look at my dad and he just smirked and said now he's jobless and homeless. I thought about it for a second before I said in my most sarcastic tone oh I'm so sorry to hear that we laughed about it a little and my parents gave me some words of wisdom before leaving me to drive myself home where my best friend was already waiting to keep me company. Bob and his sister showed up a few days later for his pitiful boxes of stuff, he tried to talk to me, to explain. But my best friend descended on him like a harpy if he muttered more than a few syllables in my direction so he was shut down almost immediately. He left that night and I have never heard from him since. I blocked him on social media but there was really no need as he made no effort to contact me on any level. That's Bob. Ever lazy, ever deluded and always in butthole, so here I am many years later happily married to my high school sweetheart and the mother of two beautiful little boys and grateful to have moved on when I did. The experience with Bob certainly took its till I lost a lot of weight due to lack of appetite but had a myriad of trust issues moving forward but the point is I moved forward. I have grown leaps and bounds as a person since this experience and am truly content with where my life is now but every now and then when I'm drifting off to sleep I can't help but wonder. Whatever happened to good old Bob? Is he out there somewhere? 
in the woods with a stick and his wits as his only gear. Waiting for a Martian government to make its move. Ah well, a girl can dream smile thank you so much for reading and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to message me with any questions or comments smile at it. Since this seems to be a minor point of contention I would like to better explain the mention of Netflix early on in the post. I realize by the way it is phrased it may have given some of you the wrong impressing. He was not streaming Netflix as streaming wasn't much of a thing then. He would just have revolving door of movies he'd chosen on disc coming and going from the house. Beyond that he busied himself playing my PS2, being a bane on society and general douchebagery. DL, Doctor, I discovered my boyfriend was cheating so I organized a sting operation with the other woman. Boyfriend ended up chickless, jobless and homeless within a matter of Hi guys, please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Wow, kudos to you for kicking his butt to the curb. Quite literally too. Your parents were amazing. Kudos on your dad getting your key back so you didn't have to go through the entire Bob scenario where he lets himself in and then spends the next 6 hours annoying you to forgive him. Your best friend shutting him down, honey you had an awesome support team, and if I could, I'd bake them all cookies. I love that you got a happy ending, a lot of women who go through this seem to lather rinse and repeat on the bad relationships. Watching Netflix 12 years ago? As in renting DVDs through in the mail Netflix? Holy poop I completely forgot that was a thing. This is probably the best spelling slash articulation I have ever seen on this sub. Shit's written out like an actual story, not just nonsensical ramblings. I know many people have already said it, and you probably have to yourself as well, but holy ducking hell Bob was a dirtbag. I think my favorite part was when June showed up and you guys just greeted each other normally right in front of him, greeting each other as if you people had spoken before, since you had, well Bob thought you never knew a thing.